How's it going, guys? Welcome to the channel. This uh, this video I put together, this is going to be for anybody that's going for their AMP CIP Level 1 course. Uh, this is in uh, regards to the abrasive blast cleaning standards of steel. I'm going to be doing a bunch of series of these, just kind of acting as study guides, kind of, uh, to help you guys, you know, prepare for, you know, your exam. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, where we are. So, abrasive blast cleaning um, uses all kinds of materials, steel shot, uh, coal slag, uh, dry ice, glass, walnut, um, garnet. There's a new material from 10X, uh, engineered materials that's from steel wool. Uh, it's a clean abrasive, uh, really neat stuff, but there's all kinds of abrasives. And what this deals with is how clean a, a metal steel surface is before priming and painting, uh, whether it's an industrial setting, uh, a yacht, a boat, regardless, if it's steel, you know, this is what, uh, what goes into it. So there are five five cleaning grades um the cleanest is going to be your white metal which is an sp5 or well and a nace level one crap it's a little confusing i know you have to memorize these this was the hardest thing for me during my uh nace or cip level one class uh was memorizing these and keeping it you know organized in my head so white metal is completely clean uh no shadows no stains nothing it's perfect near white metal blast is an sp10 or nace 2 and it allows for five percent staining i'll show you in some pictures in a little bit here um what that looks like commercial blast sp6 or nace 3 uniform metal uh metallic color obviously it's bare metal it allows for 33% uh, uh, of the surface area. So if there's, you know, a thousand square feet, uh, you know, 333 square feet of it can contain uh, staining. Not leftover material, not rust, but stain. Uh, industrial is, industrial grade blast cleaning is between commercial and brush, brush off. It's a, uh, It's a pretty light, you know, it's not like a super clean uh, quality, I guess. Mainly just for removing stuff that, like, uh, stuff that, you know, you really don't, you're not concerned with the performance, basically. I mean, it's it's minimal surface prep, these last, uh, last two especially. And then uh, SP7 or NACE4. Uh, remove loose rust and mill scale but anything that's tight can stay so yeah those are the the uh standards that we use in the in the u.s there are uh european you know standards they use iso um sa one two two and a half and three as you can see you have to memorize all of these and this is where i, I struggled the, the most uh, sorry for making this more confusing because I just realized I did it in descending order on this chart and ascending order in the last one. So, sorry. But cleanest, uh, least clean. Uh, yeah. Pretty basic. Um, so, when you're choosing, when you're assessing, you know, steel as a coding inspector, is it brand new steel? or maybe you're not, is it bare steel or is it painted? Those are like the two categories. So for unpainted surfaces, uh, just bare steel, grade A contains very little rust, maybe some mill scale, uh, little imperfections, burrs, stuff like that. Then uh, rust grade B 
contains, you know, a little bit more, but it's still mostly surface. C is completely rotted, uh, rusted out with somewhat shallow pitting of the steel. And then grade D is completely rusted, uh, heavy pitting. Yeah, as you can see, when you're assessing blast cleanliness, identify an initial condition. So you'll give it a rating or grading. Is it unpainted? Grade A through D. Painted conditions, G1, G2, and G3. G1 is pinpoint rust. G2, moderate pitting. G3, severe pitting. So here's the uh, photos that show you know this condition. So as you can see, G1 initial condition contains uh, pinpoint rusting and just you know it's an it's an old coating system that, that's going to need replaced. As you can see, the G2 and G3 are significantly worse. So whenever you're looking at the paint specification or looking at whatever piece you're supposed to be inspecting. The reason why the the starting grade of the surface and then the clean grade, like what is it? What does it need to be prepared to? Does it have to be perfect? Can it be a little less than perfect, or can it be just a you know quick and thirty uh, three percent or you know seventy seven percent effort, if you will? As you can see, though. Uh, with starting rust grade B, this actually shows what it looks like when they're blasted to this the specification. So if it calls for near white, that's what it looks like. Uh, or I'm sorry, near white, this is what it looks like. White metal, that's what it, that looks like. And then uh, brush off and commercial. So here's like a whole chart um, showing all of them. Uh, in one place. So if you want to take a screenshot of that, help yourself. So yeah, once you're, once the surface is blasted, you'll go in and inspect and using a Viz1 standard, it's a physical card. So as you can see, it's a physical book. Come on. There we go. Oh my goodness. Focus. Oh, I tried. So anyway, the, you, you'll take your booklet and you, you visually compare. You can uh, you can actually feel it, you know. Uh, it'll feel somewhat like rough sand, or not rough sandpaper, but like 80, 60 grit sandpaper, something like that is uh, usually the desired feel. If it's really heavy, you know, it's not good. If it's too smooth, that's not good either. So yeah, this just shows, you know, the difference uh, between a grade D, you know, grade D rust panel blasted to uh, SP6 commercial. And then this shows a G3, you know, heavy pitting uh, of an aged coating system that's on steel. You can see, like, visually they're different. Um and it's because of the depth of the pitting and how that affects the, you know, visual aspect of it. Again, G3, this shows all the conditions, commercial blast, uh, white metal, near white. You can see that, like, that subtle color difference as you go uh, up. And yeah, again, this just shows the difference. But this was the hardest thing for me, um, just because of a little dyslexia. 
little dash of dyslexia makes this really difficult. Um, these things are a little pricey, just to be honest. Hopefully, once you start, your employer uh, will pay for your equipment and standards and stuff. That's usually how it goes. Um, if your employer's making you pay for your equipment and standards and whatnot, I hope that they're paying you extremely well. Uh, yeah, reach out to me if that's the case. I'll see if I can help. But um, yeah, these standards for AMP members, uh, $157 and non-AMP members, it's $210. And uh, you have Viz 1 for dry abrasive blast cleaning. Viz 3 is for power and hand tool cleaning. Viz 4 is for water jetting, uh, you know, 10,000 to 40,000 PSI. And then wet abrasive blast cleaning is S, uh, Viz 5. And that's, you know, the mixture of dry abrasives with uh, hydro, you know, water jetting or water blasting. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. But uh, just some final tips for you guys, uh, anybody that's going for your AMP CIP level one. Uh, number one, believe in yourself. Seriously. Stop the doubt. Stop that negative self-talk. But I'm stupid. I'm dumb. I'm this. I'm that. Stop. Just stop. Even if you're going through that and it seems like that, don't speak it. Say positive stuff about yourself and your situation, even if it's not good. Trust me. What you speak, your words uh, steer, you know, your life more than you guys realize. Number two, do your very best to memorize those standards. Uh, it's really, I, like I said, I struggled really hard with that one, uh, which is why I made this video. And uh, yeah, I just hope you guys have an easier time with it than I did. Uh, do not overthink it. Do not overanalyze. Use as much common sense as you can muster. Number four, during the class, make friends. Like you're going to be in there with 20 to 30 other people who it's a mixture of people that have never done this stuff and people that have been in it a long time. If you're looking for a job or going to be, guess what? You can find, you know, your future employer right in the class. Speak to people, find out what they do, what who they work for where they live, you know, what kind of pay if, if you feel comfortable discussing that, but talk like that's, and work together. You're, you're allowed to do that during the class. Um, I've noticed that the people that hop into like two, three, four, even five person groups, uh, and study together seem to do better, uh, on the tests and whatnot. I don't know if it's just to like help make sense of it because um, it is a lot of information in a very short period of time. It's a f four days of classroom. The fifth day is test taking. So it's like 600 pages of material in uh, four days. So it is a lot. But uh, number five, pay attention. Pretend you know nothing. Don't go into it like, oh, I, my, you know, I did this. I did that. Just stop. You don't know anything. Go into it. Be humble. Uh, you don't need to study. You don't need to prep before going uh, for the level one, of course. You really don't. I went into it knowing I've heard epoxy and I heard urethanes before. But in like paint, th I've heard basic terminology, knew nothing else. Um, they teach you everything you need to know. Trust me, just pay attention. Um, and then final number seven, as a coding inspector, never give bullshit answers. If you don't know or understand something, simply say, I'm not sure, but I can find out. This class is going to show you how to handle serious situations with care and caution. Because uh, on these big projects, you know, this is multi-million dollar projects running and you're going to be responsible for ensuring quality, which can screw up production. So you have to keep that in mind. You're not here to screw paint, uh, screw paint contractors. You're here to help get the job done right. So yeah, this is, uh, 
the video and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'm planning on making a bunch more. So uh, please guys, if you're, if you consider it, uh, please subscribe to the paint father channel and please comment, uh, leave likes, you know, engage with, with the channel as much as you guys can. Uh, it would, it really goes a long way. So, uh, yeah, feel free to, uh, comment any questions or, we're, you know, comments, whatever. And, uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. All right. Take care guys.